Today, Synology Drive. I'm gonna talk about how you can use your big, fast network attached storage to create your own cloud server for you or even your team to access, share, upload, download, anything on that server or on your device out connected to the internet. It is super, super cool and it can really save you or your small organization if you're currently paying for cloud-based data storage. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's video. We're gonna be talking about network attached storage and specifically about how to harness your own network attached storage to really get rid of the need for Dropbox or Microsoft One or Google Drive storage that you pay for every month. You know, if you're going to employ a, a, a high-end network attached storage device like Synology produces, they've got an app that will just make it easy for you or a small team or a family to have shared folders that you can access from anywhere in the world and you can upload to say photos or video or documents or anything you need as well as grab links to to send to anybody else to share it's basically like your own cloud storage system so in this video i'm going to walk through you know a little bit more about the synology nas very very briefly because i've already done videos on how to set that up and how to, how to kind of get around some, some provisions that Backblaze has to use Backblaze to back up that big network attached storage with local drives. I've got a couple of those videos, I'll link those and talk just really briefly about them, as well as dispel a couple of frequently asked questions that I hear about the system from people that are just setting up their own. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to set up Synology Drive and, and create that cloud-based storage on your network attached storage. And then the third part of the video, I'll go through and show you how I use that both on my laptop and my phone and just how convenient and cool it can be. So buckle in, we're gonna talk about a lot of fun capabilities that really expand what's already an awesome system of storage uh, for photographers and, and creative professionals and enthusiasts alike. So almost a year ago, I did a video on how I actually took the pieces out of the boxes, what I bought, how I put it all together and built my network attached storage system from Synology to feed all the computers in my studio at really, really high data rates, a big batch of data. It has simplified my life to no end. I can't imagine going back. But that video is linked right here. And all the parts and pieces uh, that I used are linked in that video, along with just a detailed, you know, down to screwdrivers and installing the operating system for the network attached storage and how you go into the portal on your computer to adjust and set up the settings for it to give yourself access. It's all dialed in that particular video. So if this is new to you, that's one you might wanna back up and watch if you're interested in the capabilities that this brings you. Um, I will say also that all the parts and pieces that I've used to create this system are linked over at my link site under the digital darkroom section. If you just go to hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links or click on this link, it'll take you right there. Subsequently, I did a second video that was just about how to back up the data that's on your NAS. There's a certain amount of redundancy. You can have you know, one or two hard drive failures depending on how you set it up without losing any data, sort of like the Drobo systems used to be of old. But it's still best data practices, even with a redundant hard drive array system like this RAID system that we're creating in the Synology NAS. It's best to have two copies on site and one in the cloud. And so I did a whole video about how despite it being a network attached storage system, you could create a affordable, slow spinning backup drive system locally that then gets backed up to the cloud. And what software you need to accomplish that. Specifically, I use some software called GoodSync that has a Synology package, an app that really makes it simple to sync the network attached storage to a local drive that can then just be synced up to Backblaze under the unlimited plan really, really cheaply and affordably. That video is linked right here, so you can click that and watch that for backup. One thing I'm going to interject before I show how to set up the Synology drive for your own cloud storage server is, is to answer a question that I frequently get from people, even after they've watched my video on how to put together and set up your Synology 
uh, network attached storage system. And that is, can I just directly connect that box of drives to my computer and serve that data straight through my computer? Why does it need to be on the network? And, and I felt the same way. I explored that. It took a lot of time with the engineers at Synology to explain to me and for me to understand. And I, I don't want to go into all the levels of complexity, but I'm sure a lot of you network folks out there would understand it better. You absolutely have to connect the Synology network attached storage drive into your network. It is its own computer. It has a CPU, it has RAM, it has its own operating system. It is running as a computer serving data across your network. So if you only have one computer you want to use it with, you need to get a 10 gigabit ethernet switch that has two 10 gigabit ethernet ports alongside any kind of slower port that will connect directly to your router. The way that that works is, the NAS will send data into the switch at 10 gigabit ethernet speed through that 10 gigabit port. The computer will accept data through that 10 gigabit ethernet connection. You need to use CAT6 cable or CAT5e if it's really short runs of cable. And it'll be moving fast up to a gigabyte a second through that fast 10 gigabit, gigabit ethernet connection. But the switch being connected directly to the router will make both the computer and the NAS feel that they're also connected directly to the router. That doesn't need to be a 10 gigabit connection, and there are very few routers out there that exist with 10 gigabit ethernet connections. Certainly not any that are in the affordable range. So that's a really good thing. All you really need is that switch moving the data on the right lane. So the only connection you make from the NAS is directly to that 10 gigabit ethernet switch. The switch then connects to the router. The computer also connects to the switch via fast lane. And in my case, I have multiple computers in the studio and I have a five 10 gigabit ethernet port switch, which I describe a couple different switch options in that setup video I linked earlier. In my case, one line goes to my Mac studio and plugs directly into the back of it. Another line comes into this OWC Thunderbolt Pro dock, which has a 10 gigabit ethernet connection. This line coming in is from that switch that my NAS is connected to. This converts that 10 gigabit ethernet into Thunderbolt data. It can flow up to 40 gigabytes a second over a Thunderbolt cable. So internet power and that fast data from my NAS is all coming through this one Thunderbolt 4 cable. So, again, there is no way to directly connect a network attached storage system like Synology builds straight to your computer. It needs to go to the network and flow through ethernet cabling into your computer and potentially through a Thunderbolt dock like this or into a 10 gigabit equipped computer directly like the Mac Studio behind me. All right, so I'm gonna use my laptop here, which is Windows. It would be the same back on my, my Mac Studio behind me. Um, you're gonna access the Disk Station Manager software, the operating system for your, your Synology network attached storage through a web portal. You know, you can see my address is grayed out. It's just gonna be a network address on your network. And that's where you're gonna go in to control what's happening on your NAS, what applications, which are called packages in Synology speak, are installed, how the files are set up, and initialize your Synology drive server. It's where your administration console for that is gonna be located. Before we go into all that, you know, I think it's important for you to run into the package center, uh, and you would, you would go into all packages and search for Synology drive. Now you see I've already got it installed but you'll find that Synology drive server and install that in your package center, all right? Once that's installed, it'll be listed in all packages like mine is, uh, and, and you'll find, oops, installed packages, sorry. And you can, you can open that up. We'll talk about that in a minute. I have a shortcut on my DSM desktop here. Now, before you do that, there's a couple of important things to do before you fire up the Synology drive, uh, and, and one, is if you want to have a shared folder, maybe for you and your family or for your team beyond just a personal shared cloud storage folder, you can create as many as you want. Uh, you, you've got to create a base level folder within your network attached storage. And the way that you do that in your control panel is go in here to share folders. And I have a big folder here, my Hudson Henry NAS network attached storage that has all my photo and video files. It's just my big pot of data. I don't necessarily need all of that out on the road. 
But then I have, there's a, there's, there's a thing here called homes, and we'll talk about that in a minute. There's, that's set up by Synology Drive, and inside uh, is a set of folders for each and every person that you have as a user. All right, here in the control panel, you can add users like family members. Um, you know, you can see here I've got one for my wife Stacy, one for me, one for Rick, who you know is my workshop coordinator uh, and, and works with me constantly. Um, so each of these people gets their own folder in there by Synology Drive. Synology Drive creates that homes folder. But I've created a folder in here called Hudson Synology Drive, and I've got another one called Rick and Hudson Synology Drive, and another one for workshop shared images. Those are all folders I've created to make cloud storage. I'm gonna create a, a test one just for us. I'm gonna, here in the shared folder section of the control panel, I'm gonna say create shared folder, and we're just gonna call it test uh, folder drive, maybe. Um, and I don't want to hide it. Uh, I can enable its recycle bin. I could restrict access to administrators only or not. Uh, we'll create next. Um, we can encrypt it if we want. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm just going to delete it. Uh, I'm going to say next. Uh, there's a lot, of, you know, I, I'm not going to worry about enabling checks. And that can slow your, um, that can slow your processing down a little bit. But I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. So we've created it, boom, there it is, all right? Um, and I can give access to, say, my wife if I want to be able to read and write to that folder as well. That way it would be easy to share that with her using Synology Drive, um, to have her be a team member on that folder. When she signs into her account on the network attached storage, when she signs into Synology Drive on this network attached storage drive, it will list this as one of the places she can access data from or share data to. Anybody that's a an user that I click read write here, I could say Rick has no access and I have read write access, all right? I don't tend to use the admin account. I have my own admin account. So I'll say apply, boom, all right? We've got a test folder drive, all right? So that's set up. Again, we've talked about how to set up users. We've talked about how to set up a specific shared folder or multiple shared folders for your drive. All right, we can close the control panel. That's this little button right here. All right, now you've already downloaded the Synology Drive admin console, but let's have a look at it here. This is where you're gonna go in, uh, and you know there's, there's lots of statistics. You can see who's been accessing your Synology Drive. You can see Rick has his Mac Studio accessing it. My Mac Studio is accessing it. Uh, my, uh, my, my laptop here, it's saying desktop, but that's my PC desktop right here, and Rick's laptop is Irving Penn. You can see lots of statistics about usage and files, um, but the most important thing here is gonna be under the team folder, all right? And we now have this test folder drive, and it is not enabled. Team folders are essentially folders that you're gonna say, these are part of my Synology Drive, I want to access that through Synology Drive. You can see my big, huge drive that has all of my archive of photos, all my archive of videos. I'm not enabling that. Um, I have enabled the My Drives, you know, which is the my own personal one, Rick's own personal one, Stacy's own personal folder. Uh, I've got my Synology Drive folder, which I use more for myself generally, and Rick and my shared folder, which we use out on the road for workshops, a shared image folder. And now I'm going to enable the test folder drive. All I've got to do is click on that, make it highlighted blue, and click enable. It's going to ask me, you know, if you have these versions enabled, when you delete files, it'll keep a record of the old files. It won't delete them until all these rules you know, go by. Maybe it'll delete older versions after 30 days if you haven't used them. I like to set it to three maximum versions. I'm not working with documents where we're doing constant revisions all the time that are that critical. So I think keeping three versions is fine and rotating from the earliest version and versions older than 30 days will be deleted older versions, all right? So I'll say okay, boom. Uh, readers with read-only privileges for the selected team folder can only sync files from the server to their client devices. Any changes made on the client devices will not be synced back. So that's where you go, like it says, into the control panel shared folder to set up user privileges. We just did that in the control panel a minute ago. We went in and checked, the, checked that Stacy has read and write privileges, I have read and write privileges, and Rick has no access. Done and done. I've created a test folder shared with my wife Stacy. Done and done. All right, 
Now, if we go into Synology Drive itself, that's an app that's downloaded here. You can see when you click on here, you can say, get desktop and mobile apps. If you click on that, it'll take you to a link to download the PC or the Mac version. You can go into the, um, to the Apple Store and get the iOS version. You can go into Google Play and get the Android version of the app. Uh, and, and we'll go into that for a second here, all right? And, and so just to avoid any confusion, we're gonna go ahead and shut down this Disk Station Manager Synology Drive app that's, that's running in the browser. And we're really gonna look at the software that's installed on this PC. It could be you know, on a Mac, it's the same software. Basically, the interface is identical over on my, my Mac Studio. But you'll see there's a little icon running down here, it would be up in the top right on the Mac, that shows that Synology Drive client's running on my computer. If I click on it, it gives me a list of recently changed files. Kind of looks a little like Dropbox, for those of you who've used Dropbox. Uh, and we can run over to that Synology app via the web-based browser. Uh, we can open the folders that are synced on, locally on my computer. We'll talk about that in just a second or we can go into settings and we can pause the synchronization so that it's not taking up any network space or we can go into shoot into, into settings and that's where I want to go right now. That opens up the app. You could also just go search for the app on your Mac or your PC and open up the Synology Drive client. But in here we have tasks that we're doing, synchronization tasks. You can create backup tasks that back up specific folders on your computer incrementally whenever you're doing anything to your NAS. Some pretty cool stuff. Um, one thing I'm gonna wanna do right here is create a new synchronization task. And a sync task is saying that I want a folder locally on my computer that shows me everything that's in one of those team folders or in the My Drive folder on the network attached storage. It's kinda like your Dropbox folder or your Google Drive folder or your Microsoft One folder. And you don't necessarily have to download everything that's there on the network attached storage. You can just see what's there and download what you want. Or you can say that one folder keeps an updated version of everything for offline access. It's pretty darn cool. It's very, very, and you can, and you can go in there and share any folders from that drive with other people from wherever you happen to be on your laptop, on your phone, wherever, like we talked about. So, you know, if you look in here, one thing you'll notice is we don't have that new test folder. I've got my Rick and Hudson Synology Drive and my Synology Drive backing up to this computer. Those are the two most important folders for me. But that new one that I created, sharing with Stacy, I need to create a new sync task to bring that in and create a folder that it's syncing into. So I click sync tasks over here. Let me close this again and show you. I click sync tasks, not a backup task, a sync task. I cre click create and I'm choosing to do it on my network attached storage, my Synology NAS, not someone else's I'd have to log into. And the, the, the folder that I wanna sync, I gotta choose, whether it's my drive or whether it's a team folder, and in this case, it's that test drive folder that we created. That's what I wanna synchronize. I could drill down in and just save one portion of that, but instead I want that whole folder, all right? And that's in there, okay, now, I want to change the location that it's being backed up on, on my computer. And because I'm backing up multiple folders, I'm gonna to have to name this folder. That's one of the things I wish Synology Drive Client did automatically for you, but, but it doesn't. Um, and, and I don't necessarily want it to be on my system drive. I have a separate fast NVMe, two NVMe ports on this motherboard, and I have a fast M.2 drive just for data, and that's where I'm putting it on this E drive on my motherboard. And I'm gonna put it in the Synology drive folder. I don't want it to create an empty Synology drive folder. I want it to create one called test folder drive. So I'm gonna click the plus button here, uh, and it's gonna be, whoops. Oh, I didn't, uh, shoot, hold on. I thought I was already in there, I wasn't yet. I'm still, it still wants to put me back in that C drive. I'm gonna come down here and in the Synology Drive, that's where I'm creating a new folder. Now, now we got it. You have to click on Synology Drive first. And we're gonna call it Test Folder Drive, all right? So that's where we're putting it, right there. Um, and we say, okay, boom, Test Folder Drive. It's putting it there. I click on Enable On-Demand Sync to save space on your computer. That's what we're talking about, where you don't necessarily have to bring 
everything from that folder on your NAS into the computer. You can see it and it'll show you a little symbol that it's in the cloud and you'd have to download it, um, but that saves you space on your computer. So we're gonna enable that and I click done. Testing the connection and boom, there it is. All right, and you can see the cloud connection has been made. All right, so now when I go down here and I click on this little icon, if I want to look at folders, you'll see I can choose, well, which of those folders would you like to look at? And I could say, let's have a look at the test drive folder, all right? And it's created documents, sharing videos, all right? You can see it's in Synology Drive. I can see all of these folders here, all right? I could look at something that's in my Synology Drive, right? And let's see, what do I have that's in here? Uh, some Lightroom exports. You can see the little cloud status shows you that it's not downloaded to this computer. All right, I can look in here and see the things that are in there. It'll give me thumbnail views of some of these images, right? If I wanted to have a look at it, just double clicking it could open this image, all right? And then when I close it, now all of a sudden it has a little green check mark. That's local now, that downloaded because I asked for it, all right? And if I wanna have all of these, these, these things, the status right here shows me, I can right click and when I come down here and say show more options, it opens a Synology drive window and I could say pin local copy permanently. Boom, all right? And all of a sudden you're gonna see this change to a green check mark. That means that's now locally stored, all right? When I look in Lightroom exports, that's got a green check. Those are all downloaded, all right? Favorites to print is another folder that I have locally pinned to have access to. Scans, those are things, you know, documents and things I might need for the accountant or something. Super, super cool. If I want to share one of those images, all right, let's say, hmm, you know, maybe I'll send this off to someone. I can right click and under that same thing, show more options and Synology Drive, get a link, boom, all right? Only invitees can access, anyone with an account can view, anyone can, so if, if I can also create a public link, create a public link to share files with anyone. Anyone with the link can view or anyone can edit. I've got all these same kinds of choices, right? I can require a password if I want, put it on, I can make the link expire at a certain time, but essentially I can just copy this link and then paste it into an email, boom, and share that image. Anybody that hits that link can download the image. Or I can do the same thing with a whole folder. All right, it enables me to do that same kind of thing that you're used to uh, doing with Dropbox or Microsoft One or with uh, Google, Google Drive, except you're not paying for it. It's on your own home server. You know, and, and one question I get asked, well, you know, what if the power goes out while I'm away on a trip? Um, well, when you're setting up your, your, your your Synology NAS, one of the settings in the control panel is what to happen after a power failure, and by default, it's just restart. So the minute that the power comes back on and the power company restores power to your property, say after the down tree was taken care of up the road, all of a sudden the network attached storage will start, the router will start, the computer in the network attached storage will connect right into the router, and your server's back online. So it's not something you have to log into like a computer and restart and get all running again. It'll, it'll come back up all by itself, um, which is pretty darn cool. And you can log in to the, to the, to the uh, disk station manager remotely and control settings and do all kinds of cool stuff. This is just a really flexible system, not only for moving data around fast in your own uh, editing workflow, but also just for accessing it anywhere you happen to be in the world with an internet connection. All right, so that having been done, let's have a look at how this works with the mobile app. I'm gonna jump onto my phone and show you how that works. All right, so we've talked about how you can use your web-connected laptop to synchronize folders between your network attached storage drive folder, Synology drive folder, uh, and share and upload and download data back and forth using your NAS as a home server. Now let's talk about how you can do all those same things on your mobile device. Whether you're on iOS or Android, on a tablet or a phone, there's a Synology Drive app, either at the App Store for Apple or for the Google Play Store. You can download the Drive app. In either case, it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna go ahead, pull it up, and it's gonna give you some recently altered files, things like that. You can see things I've been doing today. You've got, you can star things. 
you can label things, you've got folders that are stored for offline use or files that are stored for offline use. Um, you can upload things with this button. You can upload a photo or take a photo or record something or scan a document. You know, boom, it'll give you op optical character recognition. Tell it where to put all that. You can create a folder. You got photos, documents, audio, video, all that stuff up there. That's in sort of your main home page navigation right here. You can search the drive up at the top there. Um, you've also got this button for files, and that'll take you right into either the My Drive files or into your team folders like we did before. You can see the test drive folders automatically in there if it's set up in the drive admin in your, your uh, disk station management software, it's gonna automatically come into your app when you're logged in. Obviously, when you download this app, you're gonna initially log into your own NAS using your username and password. Um, you can use your quick connect ID that you set up when you set up your NAS originally. And you can go in, you know, just like we did a minute ago, you can see all of your, your stuff in here. You can go ahead and you can share things if you want, just like we did before. You've got permissions codes with quick links or, quick, or you know, with QR codes, or you can copy a link with all kinds of privacy settings if you want, or you can create a public link the same way with QR codes or, or download links. You can password protect and limit how long that, that link is active, all that same kind of cool stuff. Uh, you can preview files. You can also download it. You see you've got download, send a copy, boop, boop, all these cool different things, all right? You can set it for offline access so that it's stored locally on your phone at all times instead of having to download it. Um, when you're offline, you can store lots of documents that way. It's all just about the same. You can move it around, all that cool kind of stuff. Uh, you've got shared files, things that I've shared with others are all listed right here. There's, you know, the recycle bin, there's some more settings, you can create backup tasks for your phone. Some of those are like backing up all of your photos if you want. I use Lightroom Mobile for that, otherwise uh, I, I would, you know, with Lightroom Classic, I use the, the mobile app to back up my phone photos to Lightroom, otherwise I'd be using this. Um, you can synchronize folders on your phone to be backed up on your NAS, just like you can on your computer. Pretty darn powerful. So let, let, let's, let me show you one way I might use this. I, I shot some B-roll that I'm gonna use in this video. You'll have seen it go already with my phone earlier. Uh, and, and I was already thinking about doing this. I could, I could close this down. I wanna select all these little bits of phone video B-roll and I'm gonna share it to the Synology Drive app. Uh, and I've got a packet select any folder that I want from the team folders. I'm going to put it in my Synology drive um, in its ATS mobile content. I'll create a new folder uh, and I'll say Synology drive sharing. All right, there's a new folder. Six files will be uploaded to Synology drive sharing. That's where we're putting it. I'm going to hit upload. And it's gonna take a little time. These are big 4K files. Let's see. My network's pretty fast though. Yeah, two of them are done. Three of them are done. Meanwhile, let's jump over here and navigate into the ATS mobile content. There's that folder. And boom, you can see them coming in. There's five of them. Sixth one's uploading. There it is. How cool is that? All right, so now when I open my folder over on the Mac, that's the same folder, it's over on the NAS. I'm gonna to go to edit up this video. It's already there, ready for me to just put into my video editor. So it's really, really cool stuff. I, and I think that you know once you've got your network attached storage system, it can not only shuttle really fast data through your network to any computer that you want to connect up via 10 gigabit ethernet, but it can also replace those expensive uh, cloud storage services that you might be paying monthly right now. So it's definitely something to consider when you're pricing in the factor of network attached storage. This is a way to save a little bit of money on cloud storage. Just do it all yourself, all right? So that's it for the Synology stuff for now. Um, if you have questions or comments, throw them in the comments section, hit me up via email. I love talking about all this stuff. Um, we've got a set of office hours 
Tuesday, January 9th, we're going to talk about sort of uh, resolutions for the new year, 2024, things that you might want to explore creatively in the next year, some goals to set for yourself. Uh, Rick and I will talk about a few of our goals for ourselves in the new year photographically. Um, and then I'm very shortly going to be off on a, a quick kite surfing trip down in the Sea of Cortez. And then back to run a couple of printing workshops here in this studio, which I cannot wait for. We have so much fun in those. All right, everybody. So I hope you've had a wonderful holiday filled with family, good food and fun. And now that we're getting down to business for 2024, hope you're out there staying creative, staying safe, and we'll see you next week.